Welcome everybody to another edition of W2005 here in TW 2020 and it's time for the next to last week before the home show for Rising Sun Revolution and now we've got Nitro live from Atlanta, Georgia at, with a big event of Eddie Guerrero vs. Canyon as announced last week along with the TV title match so let's get rolling. So we start out with a graphic you know pointing out that it's going to be Eddie Guerrero vs. Canyon tonight and a big main event this gets a 71 for the opening match graphic. Then we head down to the ring where Jason Jett is waiting as Truth wraps down to the ring. Um, I'm sure there's some good, you know, things about Jet not being set or, again, I can't rap. I'm not going to try to rap. Um, it's the truth. I'm sure he doesn't think well. Um, this gets a 62 as we continue on the road to the team title match that happens here as Truth gets in the ring. As in a match, a decent match, you know, Truth and Jet go back and forth. Truth, you know, uh, Truth, you know, hits his big moves, his, you know, quasi axe kick, um, his Truth or Cons, his uh, sort of like, you know, uh, gut wrench power, gut wrench uh, power slam, uh, some brawling, um, some high flying line with Jason Jet as Jet plays, you know, the, the bully heel. Um, Jet goes for the cr modified crash landing, but Truth gets out of it. Eventually, Truth gets him up, and you know, even though Jet like tries to sort of like beat the clock, you know, let the clock run out, in the next few minutes, Jet, you know, Truth finally runs over him, hits the Truth or Consequences. One, two, three, and you're of the match, and new WWE World Television Champion is the Truth here on Nitro. This gets a 69. Uh, Truth gets a 63, Jet gets a 67, solid stuff, and post-match, the Truth celebrates with the belt to the cheers of the crowd as it gets a 65. So, long, pretty good reign for Jet, as, you know, I wanted something for him to do after the whole tag team broke up, and, you know, he now still himself as a mid-card heel, and also a TV champion, he can do some other fun stuff. But let's get rolling to our next match, our part of the show. As we have backstage promo as, uh, Tank Dolan and Ray Penn, you know, uh, say, you know, they have a match tonight versus the Heart Legacy, and Tolan says... There's a lot about legacy they can say, but here's the reality. We're, you can talk about legacy all you want, but we're the future of tag team wrestling in this company, Hearts. You see, we've got an, a true international superstar, not something from some crappy country like Canada, but Ray LePad, and me, the sexiest man in WCW. And yes, Evans, you get the cheers of those team bumpers, but real women look at me and they want me. And it's just too bad that we're going to have to show just how great we are. So 72, decent heel promo, setting up there's a match later tonight of um, Tolan and Le Pen versus the Heart Legacy, as this gets a 72, like I said. Then we go backstage where, um, you know, Chavo Gro and Matt Seidel, you know, talk, and they basically, you know, put over the fact that tonight Chavo Gro is going to team up with Matt Seidel versus Prince Ose, who is Seidel's official, uh, you know, who, who, you know, is chasing after the Cruiser Chase Champion and a, tight, and a partner of Seidel's, of Prince Ose's choice. Uh, you know, Jeff Grove, you know, basically tells me, you know, it's hard to be a young wrestler here. Everybody's coming after you, but you know, he's going to be his back, and let's get ready for a match later. It's just a sort of thing to basically set up the match and, you know, set things forward. As it gets a 44, said I was not the best, but Chavo is pretty decent. We have a match, which unfortunately gets a low rating because of the pre-show, um, you know, uh, the, not pre-show, the, uh, um, God, I'm having a brain fart. Um, yeah, you know, basically two low card workers. But, you know, it's still a solid match, which looks like I would get a mid-40s, low-40s without the um, ding for the, um, for the you know, unknown workers. But, you know, a match that, you know, back and forth, high-flying match. Eventually, you know, this came through because, you know, obviously last week we had a triple threat match where Chad Moore shockingly pinned Austin Aries, thanks to help from Jerry Lynn in, in the triple threat. But here, Austin Aries basically gets his revenge. Like, Moore still gets a little bit of offense in, but this is mainly just a way to put over um, Austin Aries as he eventually hits a big... Uh, modified Brain Buster goes up top, 450 splash, and gets a pinfall victory here. This gets a 30, like I said. More got a string with one calf muscle, which probably didn't help matters either. Uh, More gets a 38. Austin Aries gets a 48. Then he gets in the ring and he says, yep, I saw that. Jerry Lynn, last week, you put your nose region you belong. I was going to get the win and you failed me. And everybody just saw what I can do in that ring. So Jerry Lynn, you old man. Take your man and Musel and face me in this room. So just a quick heel promo as this gets a 46. And then we go backstage where Eddie Guerrero is with, uh, with nobody actually. He's backstage, you know, sort of pacing in his locker room. He says, I'm looking that ring tonight. And I'll that refuses to go away. They refuse to accept its place. Canyon, you still don't understand, Holmes, that the only reason you were ever world champion is because of the back of your head. Meanwhile, I rose to the top on my own. 
even when people didn't want me to. But I needed help when I showed up here, and I got that WC World title around my waist. And yes, I lost that championship, but I did it on my own the whole way. But I need, I need to get back to the top of this business, and you've been consistently in my way. Well, Canyon, real family values means I have to get past you, so tonight in Atlanta, I'm going to remind you why I came to W, WCW, and that's to prove I'm the best. I say, and I'm not the only, I'm not only better than Canyon, but you're not even on my damn level. So, really good promo, 100, from Eddie, because he's freaking great. Uh, but really good stuff as you build up to, you know, the big main event tonight. And then you have Osei entering his partner. He's saying, unlike you, Matt Seidel, some men know the value of going in gold. And he's welcome to come out here tonight. Tell me, lady beating on you. And out comes Simply Jordan Fine as part of the Chosen Few. This gets to 60, just a quick promo from Osei, setting up the tag match. And then they have a pretty solid tag match here. Um, so, you know, back and forth, you know, everybody does some high flying. Seidel gets to play the undercard babyface, but really he's doing some flipping and flying. Osei plays the heel. Um, you know, Divine comes in, gets his shots in, uh, Chavo gets a little good against Divine, but eventually things break down, and in a little under nine minutes, Osei, you know, eventually, you know, rolls Side Out up, puts his feet on the ropes, and gets the pinball victory, one, two, three, over your Cruiserweight Champion. This gets a 67, like I said, uh, Chavo gets a 67, Side Out gets a 44, Divine gets a 74, and Osei gets a 68. Uh, which is slightly inflated because uh, he was, of course, here for a while in, in, dev, in the Dev Territory in the Southeast, but still a really good match. The post match, the heels celebrate to the views of the crowd as this gets a 66. And then we go backstage where Eric Bischoff is in his office, and in comes Jonathan Torr along with the rest of the um, Roman Legion, Romeo's Lamurus, and Swinger Wall Pioneers coming behind him. And he says, It's an insult to the Roman Empire and my and the entire Italian nation that Sean here was allowed to come to that restaurant and attack me and my and my subjects. And you need to do something about it. And Bischoff's like, look, O'Hare's not here this week. But how about this? Next week, your your servants, as he serves as that Bischoff says that Markley, are upset about O'Hare kicking their ass in that restaurant. Fine. Next week, O'Hare and a partner versus the Roman Legion. And we'll see how you enjoyed that. And Tor says, you know, Tor agrees to it, but he's not happy about it, as Rome, and neither are Romeo and Springer. We have a match for next week's setup. It's O'Hare and a partner versus Romeo and Springer. And then we go back, no, not backstage, but we, we cut to a promo where, where we see Randy Savage, you know, basically in front of a, uh, you know, oct well, in a legally distinct octagon, so you can't sue us, where we see Don Fry basically beating up, up on the fool. He says, next week, this man, Don Fry will finally have his first match in WCW. And Goldberg, he's going to show you why you don't want to get in that ring with him. You don't, you should just run away and admit he's the better man. Dig it! Because next week, he's going to destroy some poor fool. And Bill Goldberg, just walk away while you still can. So there's a quick promo based on that Don Fry's debut will be next week. 82, solid stuff. And then we have another match for Kais Tomko. As he destroys a uh, dev worker, Tony Jones, in a little over two minutes with, with nothing to cut her off the look of his actual finisher. As this gets a 33, Tom gets a 48, Tony Jones gets a 45, gets the pre show, you know, ding, but not the end of the world. As then, uh, Helms you know, has Tomko in the ring and says, Once again, my man, Tyus Tomko, a man who has bought a guy for kings, queens, presidents, prime ministers, billionaires, has chosen to back up me here as part of my legacy. And together, we're going to dominate the tag team division, just like I dominated the United States title, just like I dominated the World Heavyweight title. This is just the beginning of my legacy. 80, decent promo, get to doing pull over Tomko, and honestly, giving some helms some time out of the ring, because he's had, you know, been sort of not dinged up, not like what I can see, but like in kayfabe. And then we have, wow. They're just cutting for great promos. Okay, so then we have Kanan backstage during Borash to respond to Eddie Guerrero. He says, Eddie, you talked about need, man. Let's talk about need. Let's talk about barely giving a door in this business while you were given a gold ticket because your name, Eddie. Let's talk about being thrown a mask to put on and being pushed into some backstage shenanigans that looks like a Z-grade martial arts film, because those in power thought you'd never be anything more than a joke. Let's talk about risking it all and almost losing it all, falling off a triple cage 
uh, try and help out an actor. And I was mind up that area, but it happened. I got to the top with some help. You're damn right. But here's the thing. Despite the way it ended, Eddie, I'm proud to be a horseman. And I still am. But tonight, that's not about, it's not about the past. It's about the future. And tonight, I'm going to walk in that ring tonight in the former home of this promotion and prove to everybody in this business and all over the world that nobody's better than Kenny. So good so another great promo. Kenny gets 100. These guys, you know, again, give him six minutes and it's, it's a roll. And then we have our another big match as a superb match. So back and forth match, Heart, you know, Heartless here flying around. Tank Tolan and Ray LePen plays those strong heels. You know, Tolan, you hit some big suplexes. Ray LePen hit you know, some big, like, you know, forearms, uh, diving clothesline. Heartless, you fight back. Jack Vince plays a face apparel to the cheese wheels of the teenage girls in the crowd. Hey, Heart comes in and does some flipping around. And, you know, things break down. But eventually, Kaz comes in as the ref is distracted, uh, you know, with, with uh, Don Marie sort of like, you know, fainting kicks at a fallen Jack Evans on the outside. He comes in, wipes out Teddy Hart with a big crescent kick to the back of the head. Tank Tolan hits his finisher. One, two, three, and a huge victory for Tolan Le Pen with help from Kaz of Ning in Koyu. And this gets an 80 overall. Evan gets an 88. Teddy Hart gets an 86. Ray Le Pen gets a 77. Tolan gets a 78. Really good match. And then post-match, we're going to see our upset in the ring. Yang comes out to join his partner Kaz along Stacey Keebler as they stare down each other as the answers put over. This is far from over as this gets a 72. Then it's time for our you know, first Thursday Revolution rundown, focusing on Monty Brown and Norman Van Dam. And then we have our finally, our main event, which is either going to not go well and get like an 80 or it's going to get like a 98. Oof. Oof. What happened here? What happened here? Okay, so we got 93, so this should be a 92. So what hurt things here? Okay. Emotional high. Okay. I see. Wow. I'm surprised that happened on a TV show. Like, okay. So I probably shouldn't... So I also did this as a spectacle. So I probably shouldn't have done that. I should have just done this as a standard, like, you know, open all-out match or slow build match. You know, not the end of the world, but st still a really great match. You know, I basically, this is, like, a great freaking match between these two, but the crowd was just burned out. Let's just put it over that way. Um, but, yeah, back and forth, obviously, you know, Eddie and Canyon, uh, you've heard me describe these two going after each other before, and it's, you know, it's the same thing. Once again, just two men absolutely, you know, kicking ass, going after each other over and over, you know, uh, Eddie... You know, Eddie being the heel and, you know, setting things up early. Uh, Eddie hitting, you know, big blue thunder bomb, going up top for the frog splash early, but Kenny getting out of the way. Kenny do some brawling and fighting, uh, going for the STO, but, I mean, not the STO, but the flatliner, but Eddie fighting out of it. Eddie going for the brain busters, but Kenny reversing it, some back and forth, you know, brawling on the outside. Uh, Eddie getting a Big, you know, Topic and Hilo on Kenny on the outside, turning into the guardrail, beating him down, playing the cocky cocksure heel that he is, hitting even the like three amigos on the outside before rolling Canyon in, uh, going for the blue thunder bomb, but Canyon turning into a cannon cutter, but not even going for the pinfall because both men are down, slowly getting up, Canyon going for another cannon cutter, but Eddie fighting him off, hitting the hitting a big power bomb of doom, going up going up top for the jackknife frog splash, but Canyon barely getting his um, getting his knees up, Eddie slowly, slowly battling up, brawling, fighting, but eventually, out of nowhere, Kanan hits the cannon cutter and barely gets a three count as the crowd cheers. This gets an 84, like I said, Eddie gets at 92, Kanan gets a 93, and also I guess the announcing was weak, so maybe that hurt it by a point or two, then the emotional high hurt, hurt the rest. Um, was there anything else bad about the match? Let's see here, we had Sully, good momentum, um... Yeah, okay, inconsistency, but that was that would be in the, in the total match grade. Okay. I mean, again, could be a lot worse, you know, not the end of the world or anything. And overall, the show itself gets us an 87. So not quite as good as last week, but still a really solid show. As this loads up. And I guess a shorter Nitro description, I guess, this week just because of, like, it was a lot of matches and stuff as opposed to, like, lots of promos. Like, there's no long, wacky um, Raven or Macias promo, you know, so that stuff, anyway. 
So let's though look at what, well, first, oh, oh, right, okay. Oops, that's sort of spoilers, but eh, not the other the world. Uh, so Raw had a freaking 95, because of course he did. Okay, we had Edge called, called Kurt Angle, because he comes to beat Elizabeth Love in a 46. Uh, Brute Kane, the five and Van Brew, defeating Christian Saturn now Snow in the 81. Big Show to Grand, Grand Waterman. Then we had a main event of Shawn Michaels defeating Chris Jericho and Scott Hall in a 99. We had Brock and Triple H defeating Ben Long, the Undertaker in a 100. Jesus. All right. Um, yeah. Any other emails? Nope. Oh, right. I can't remember the check. Okay. So we got a 2.09 million viewers in the US. Well, they got a 2.39. So about ahead by 300,000. Interesting. But, um, so that's it for now. So I'll be back in just a moment with Revolution. All right, let's get rolling with Revolution live from Tacoma, Washington. at the beautiful Tacoma, Tacoma Dome. Let's get rolling as we start the show out with basically Ravidam and Cash already fighting. Uh, announcers put over the fact that, you know, basically before the show, Cash came out and was running down RPD after their tag match last week, and RPD came out, and they started brawling, and here we go. And these two men, of course, are both pretty good wrestlers. You know, Cash is the former bullyweight and, you know, former tag partner of Reno, and now here on his own, basically, in WWE, well, Raffinham is our current world champion, and they just... Like, they just battle. Like, it's this is a really high-impact, back-and-forth match. Like, you know, Cash gets to look good doing his, you know, matching uh, Cash, you know, RVD blue for blue on the outside. There's a little, even a little bit of extreme, as, of course, Cash was in ECW for a bit. Uh, you know, he they go over the guardrail, fight into the crowd a bit, but eventually come back inside. RVD, you know, trade spots, you know, gets a... Goes for the Indaminator, but Cash throws the chair away and is ready for him. Goes for the dead level, but RVD gets out of it. Uh... You know, Cash does some more brawling and tries to power out RVD, but RVD, you know, gets gets out of the attempt at a big um, superplex, pushes Cash off the top rope, hits a sunset flip power bomb into the rolling thunder, hits the Van Dam lander, then goes up to top one, two, three, five star frog splash, and our world champion picks up the victory here in a non title match here to open up Revolution in front of 12,000 people at the Tacoma Dome as it gets an 81, Van Dam gets a 92, Cash gets a 72, solid match. And then post-match, as RVD is celebrating, what do you think happens? Of course, Marty Brown comes in from the outside and just hits a huge pounce from behind on RVD Ra Dam as he's placed to the floor. And Monty Brown stands, you know, uh, stands, you know, um, what's the word? Stands tall above. He's looking down at the fallen world champion. He looks at the belt, you know, cocky grins, you know, yells at RVD, third. 10 more days, and then walks out into the back to the blues of the crowd as Van Dam slowly recovers. As we continue to build up, this world title match between both men as this gets an 86. Then we have another edition of the Bro Down with Chris Rocks as he's down, he's at a nightclub talking to various people, interviewing about, you know, their night, and, you know, basically put over, you know, he's always looking for a party, always looking for a good time, because he's always looking to bro down. And just, you know, some fun personality pieces to get him over. As this continues, as this gets a 26, because again, not the most over, but hey, we're getting there. And then, uh, we're, oof, what happened here? Oh, Plumbo and, okay, AJ both rolled bad on doing without a script. Oh, well, not in the world. Anyway, we, uh, come back, you know, basically from there, where, um, Chuck Plumbo is already in Teddy Long's office, basically, you know, telling him what the hell was AJ getting involved in my business last night. I had the match one, I had kick Ray Jr.'s ass, and I was going to take him out for once, for once and for all, and finally, you know, prove my top spot when he got involved. Tay Tay just looks at me and he's like, "This is pro wrestling. This stuff happens." When AJ comes in, um, you know, AJ looks over Plumbo and they start arguing. You know, Plumbo you know calls him a punk kid. AJ you know says, "Why do you think you're special? You know, you're just Sean O'Hare's, you know, weaker. You know, you're just the guy. You're just the guy that." You just wish you were Sean O'Hare, but you never will be. Meanwhile, I'm rising to the top on my own. Plumbo fires back. You have delusions of grandeur. You're never going to be better than me. I'm the future of this show. Well, you're just going to be a you're just going to be a shining star that falls apart quicker than you think. You know they can you argue. Eventually, they agree to a match for Wrestling Center Revolution: Chuck Palumbo versus AJ Styles. So there you go. Chuck Palumbo versus AJ Styles in a pretty big match. And they skipped an 81 like because they down the because they both rolled badly on their script. 
And then we have our first of our semifinals match in the women's tag team tournament as we have a fun little back and forth match between two baby faces. You know, Alexander Osaka played like a little bit of the heels, like as far as like they just like take advantage of that first of the match, but like no cheating, just two women, you know, all four women going, you know, going strong. Alexander hitting some big suplexes, Osaka doing some veteran shtick, Cartier doing her power moves, and Natty trying to get trying to get uh sharp shoulder on, but in the end of the match, Cartier gets Malia Hosaka up in the Levy after about 10 minutes and gets the pinball victory to move forward into the finals, at least the American side of the women's finals for the tag team tournament as this gets a 55. Uh, Hosaka gets a 45, Alexander gets a 45, Natty gets a 38, and Slink Cartier gets a 64. And there's some slight tension after the match, but both all four men will eventually, you know, do some handshakes and hold each other arms up as the crowd cheers as this gets a 47. As you know, spread over, Cartier and Eidhart have a big opportunity as they face off against whoever wins the next semifinal match. And then we backstage, where uh, Alex Wright is, like, doing some, you know, training with uh, Jamie. No, actually, yeah, we're not backstage. We're, um, Alex Wright is in his, you know, training dojo with Troy Wilson, who's, you know, giving him pointers. When Jamie Noble enters the building, you know, we see some, like, random, you know, trainee, like, being pushed away by Jamie Noble. And he basically says, I came here for one reason. That's to ask you. Why the hell are you ducking me, right? And you know, Tori Wilson tries to explain him, you've got other business going off. You want to talk about the US title match, go talk to Teddy Long and he'll set something up if you're worthy. And Jamie Noble says, no, no, you're ducking me, right? Because you know I can take you out. I can make you tap. I can defeat you just like I've done before. And Wright's getting a little more angry. And Wilson's like, just go talk to Bischoff. He'll either give you a normal match, he'll give you a title match, but he get stop getting away of our training. You're ducking me, and stop hiding behind the skirt, right? Face me like a man. Eventually, like, Tori tries to stop, right? But, but right, it's fine. Right, it's fine. You want a match? I'll give you a match. But you're going to be the one who's sorry about this when I'm still the U.S. champion. There we go. We have our um, U.S. title match set up for Rising Sun Revolution. If you're thinking, maybe I thought I'd another week could go and could set up this match a little more. You might be right. But there we go. Alex Wright versus Jamie Noble. 74 teeth and stuff, as these guys are all decent in them. Like, they're not top tier guys as far as, like, uh, charismatic and doing stuff, like, you know, um, in promos and stuff, but they're all pretty good. But speaking of people who are pretty good, uh, we come back to the ring, seeking destroy hits, Sting comes out to a big pop, as he basically, you know, says, well, it's been a little bit, hasn't it? Here's reality, folks. This old gunslinger had to take some time off. Me and Flair, we did our best, but, you know, so be it, but congrats to America's Wanted for kicking the ass of those weirdos when see some more star. But now, I've been resting, I've been doing appearances, and people ask me, you know, what's my future in the ring? And I tell you, I was really thinking about a car. But when WCW announced they were going back to Japan for a big show, I was thinking, there's one man I wanted to face there. And I'm glad to announce tonight that I can. You see, I faced men over there in Japan, like Chono, Anoke, and even the Great Muta. But one man is just as big as them over there. And now it's showtime for me and him. His name is Shinya Hashimoto. He's one of the best wrestlers still in the world. And at Rising Sun Revolution in Japan, we're going to have a hell of a match. I'm glad you all get to see it. So just baby face promo putting over Hashimoto and setting up, yes. And yeah, basically I'm bringing in Hashimoto for one spot. So, like again, like this, like all of my... All of my, like, guys are big enough to be, like, we don't need these to, like, to get good ratings, but I think it's fun to, like, do this as part of the show. And plus, didn't have really anything else for Sting to do, and honestly, probably don't have a m much time for him to continue to do this, so there we go, we'll, we'll, we still can. 83, because, you know, not, Sting's, like, again, he hasn't, he's not the biggest part of the show anymore, and he's off always for a while, but he's still pretty charismatic and get it over, so there we go. Then we have our other semi-final match in the Women's Tag Team Tournament, at least on the American side, as we have European Decision facing off at Roni Jonah and Lila Vaz, and the young baby faces do their best, but the problem is, you know, Jonah's a solid worker, Vaz is young and spunky, but both Nikita Colt, the former Women's Champion, and the, you know, Technician Terror, we seem to be like, just absolutely tear both of these women apart. Like, you know, they get their, their hot spots in, like, everything, they get a little bit hot, like, 
either Cult reverses a hold into submission, Busek does a sort of like judo throw and then goes on the offense with strikes. In the end, Xenia Busek gets a submission hold on Lada Vez and with nowhere to go, Vez has to tap out and you're being advanced to a match against Lee Carnier and they are next week. As this gets a 64, Busek gets a 57, Cult gets a 69, Vez gets a 43, and Ronnie Jordan gets a 37. Then, European New Zealand are celebrating when Cartier and Nitro come out for a stare down. As Nitro just put over, it's going to be a big match next week here on Nitro. The winners facing off against a Japanese women's team at Rising Sun Revolution. 74, good stuff. Then we go backstage where Amy Weber is with Paul London. You know, Amy Weber, you know, asks them basically, you know, last time you faced Billy Kim and got the win over you, what, what, what do you, why do you think you can get the win tonight here on Revolution? And, you know, London's like, yeah, you're right. Last week, Kim and God, he pinned me. Like, I can't say anything about it, he, you know? But here's the thing. I've never said Paul Billy Kidman wasn't a hell of a wrestler. The problem is, he's a prick. He's an asshole. And he's conceited and got full of himself, and he's been that way for a long time now. But tonight's another chance. Another chance to prove my worth to get in that ring and either succeeding in shocking the world or burning out too bright. So here's the truth, Amy. Either way, I'm ready to rock and roll either way. He walks away, setting up the match later tonight of London versus Kidman as this gets a 77. Because London's not the best problem guy, but he's getting a little bit better, a little bit more over. So there you go. And then we have a oof. Um, what happened here? Okay, I guess maybe I should have rated Stevie Ray or Charmel here. But okay, so storyline here is, you know, we see Booker, Stevie and Charmel all arriving in the, on the plane to Houston. And we see them, you know, basically going through the city. They eventually, you know, show up in, you know, expensive car in the projects. And then we see them like, you know, going to the corner store where we see people, you know, you know, um, you know, welcoming them, you know, big hugs, you know, Booker sees, he still seems a little wary, but see where he's talking to people, staffing hands and all that stuff, um, going to, to, to the park where we see them both shooting hoops so, somewhat badly. Say, just because, you know, they are not necessarily good at basketball, um, you know, but you do some, you know, playful, you know, scraping with some other people, you know, currently at the park. But then, you know, we cut to, you know, them sitting, you know, um, you know, sitting at a restaurant in, in the neighborhood. And, you know, Booker says, I still don't get why you're right. You know, it's nice to be back home, but I'm beyond this. I'm a six-time world champion, Stevie Ray. Me and Charmel, she's my queen. Or we're doing this together. So why do you bring me up? Because, because he really, like, because you fruity booty, you've lost yourself. Look, you call your, you should call your wife king which is fine but you think of yourself as a king it's not true look let's be honest Booker. you went to jail i understand why it happened but it happened Booker's like that's past that's not me anymore no that's part of you it's all part of you you're not a king you're more than that you're booker a man from houston from these streets in houston around 110th street in houston who was up to become a world champion multiple times when we could do it and you've lost that i don't know why but I want to bring that back to you, man. Can you can you dig that, Sekka? And there's a bit of a stare down as this thing ends. So we're going to first turn TV Ray Babyface. And he turns to Booker's brother, which gets gimmick of adequate. Yeah, I, I don't care. Yeah. But 65, fun stuff. And then we have a match where basically Keenan Sharp goes over Ron Simmons fairly quickly. Like Simmons gets some offense in and he gets some power moves in. But unfortunately, you know, at the end of the day, the issue here is, you know, Keenan Sharps has had some trouble with Ken Harrison, but Keenan Sharp's ready, and he, like, does his Muay knee strikes, takes down a quick, like, sort of side salto suplex, rolls Sharp Simmons into a, uh, you know, submission maneuver, big crossface, rear naked choke, and with an order to go, Ron Simmons has to tap out in a little over seven minutes. This gets a 70, Simmons gets a 63, Sharp gets a 71, but Sharp keeps the hold on and is trying to take out Simmons one for all. When Kennerson comes in and makes a save, breaks it up, and those two men begin fighting once again before Debbie Switchers come down and break it down. Seems like this feud must continue as this gets a 65. Then we're um, in Wilbur in a sort of segment, like showing up to where Gail Kim is training. And, you know, she basically asked Gail Kim if she saw the package on Trisha Sky last week. And she sort of like snickers and says, Of course I saw it. They pushed it like it was the biggest thing in the history of the women's division. But here's the thing, Trisha. 
you're too busy posing in skimpy lingerie for horny teens and 20-somethings and push yourself as some icon to all women everywhere on lower TV shows, but you're forgetting something. At the end of the day, this is a fight. We're going in the ring and we're going to go after each other. Rip, tear, and claw. Because I'm still the head bitch in charge of women's wrestling. And Rising Sun Revolution, I'm going to remind you of that fact. It's a really good promo for Gil Kim as we set up, you know, can you set up the women's world title match, which I did set up, right? Okay, yeah, I just want to double check. Um, so this gets an 83. Fun stuff. And then we have our main event, which gets an 88. Really good. So again, Paul London, like, Paul London plays like the uber high risk game face. You're just flying around, just trying to get any way to get advantage on Kidman. But every time he does, like, Kidman slows him down, like, kicking him in the knee, locking submissions, hitting big, like, you know, like suplexes, slowing the match down while still hitting, like, his moves, hitting a DDT, hitting a straight jacket suplex. But London fires back with his own flying around. Uh, but eventually, you know, Kidman fights back dirty, hits a low blow, eye gouges. Takes the match over. London hits a comeback, though, as, as he gets out of kick pressure, hits a modified bulldog, hits a big um, missile drop kick. Rana, few springboard moves. Uh, Kim rolls outside. London flies, goes up top rope, and hits a shooting star press off the top to the outside onto both Paul London, off to both Pilly Kidman, and, and his manager, April Hunter. He rolls Kidman back in. Hits a backbreaker, goes up top for another shooting star press, but Kimmon gets his knees up, picks up London, kick crusher, boom, one, two, three. 88, really good match. London 79, Kimmon 88. And it looks like there's going about to be a three one beatdown on London when out comes Remisier Jr. to a big pop to chase off the triumvirate. And after chasing him off, as they're back on you know the ring apron, we'll raise the ring, helping up Paul London. He takes the mic and says, Kimmon, I'm not talking to us being friends, partners, and all that stuff. That was over a long time ago, man. No, now you're just another asshole. And it's time for somebody to take you down. My dance card is empty for Rising Sun Revolution. It looks like yours is too. So in Japan, where I had great matches, I showed myself first to be who I am. After being in Mexico. Well, let's do this one more time and truly prove who was the king of the cruiserweights. Kimmon takes the mic and says, Fine. I'm going to be glad one more time to prove once and for all who is the king of the cruisers and to take you out, right? And prove that you're a fraud. So we have another match set up for Rising Sun Revolution. An old few reignited. Ray Mysterio Jr. versus Billy Kidman. And overall, the show gets us a 84. Okay, solid. I sort of expected that because I didn't have like any like super, like like last like last week we had a bunch of like hundred like really high angles. This match we had more matches, but still building up the women's tag tournament and everything else. So you know, not the end of the world or anything. So as this loads up, Thing. There we go. Okay. Um. Okay. AJ thinks. I mean, sure. So okay, that means so far for next week on Nitro, we've got O'Hare taking and a partner taking on two members uh, taking on the Roman Legion. We have uh, Don Fry's first match, and obviously the continuation of everything else going on, including the uh, Heart Legacy versus Kaz Yang feud, um, the you know cruiserweight title feud, and the other fun stuff. And then next week on Revolution, we we don't have any matches set up. But we have the finals between European Disunion and St. Cartier and Nadia Hurt, where the winners will face off against a women's a Japanese women's tag team at Rising Town Revolution, determine the first WCW women's ta- World Women's Tag Team Champions. I'm sure Rock McDaniel wants something about Monty Brown attacking him and all sorts of other fun stuff. As far as like Rising Sun Revolution, again, we have officially announced Wright versus Noble for the US title, and W versus Awesome Storm for the tag titles. Cha- whoops, not Chavo. Whoops, let's modify that booking. Amazing. Imagine if I would have like not realized that to like. Check Palumbo, there we go. That's fine. 
uh, Ray Britt versus Kidman, RVD versus Money Brown for the title, Sting versus Hashimoto in a special match, and the women's title match between Trish Sky and Gail Kim. If we look at our storylines, uh, Gibbs of Darkness is at an 81, Choosing Violence is at an 80, uh, Cruiser Refuse is at a 62, Goldberg Fries at an 80, Kazyang versus, Kazyang versus Harvin Evans is at a 75, uh, O'Hare versus Toro is at an 84, Gross Canyon is at an 86, Television Titles Fuse is at a 69, Beautiful Violence is at a 67, Disney and Your Disorder um, is at a 69, Gail Trisha, the joining background is at an 83. Wright Nobles at a 73. Sharps Anderson's at a 68. Kim London's at an 84, which I'll throw Ray Jr. in. Um, Monty RVD World Title Feud at an 83. The AJ Colombo Feud is at an 84. And the Tag Title Feud is at an 82. And that's it. So, first let's check out the WWE, where we have for SmackDown, at Christy Cummings, who's Christy Ritchie defeating Elizabeth Love. In 47, Veronica Vandy is Selena Majors in a 60, JBL and the Little Fellers, who are, yeah, Funaki and Spike. Defeated Richards, Saturn and Snow, Good Molly Holly, Jackie Eddie defeated Amber James Sneakman in a 74, Taker defeating Scott Fick in a squash, the top shelf of DDP and Steiner defeating Devon Dubois and Christian in a 88, and the main event, which got 99, because of course it did, Big Show and Edge defeated Chris Jericho and Brock Lesnar in a dog collar match. Fun, fun times. So first, if we go to our dev head, We had Claudio and Tony Jones defeating Sonny Hiyaki and Rick Michaels. Claudio's, yeah, I mean, Siaki's also doing pretty balls, so he could be being close. Jimmy Rave, Trevor Rowan, Stone Mountain, Kai Graves, Ortiz, and Daz in a 60. Uh, and then Casper Alley defeating Chance Prop in a cage match in a 66. And then on the weekly house show, we had Matt Cross and Ryan Drago defeat Bobby Lashley and Corey Chavis. Lashley's at a 29, so he still a little while ago. Cross is at a 52, Ryan Drago's at a 48. Uh, Siaki, Rhodes Mountain defeat Claudio, Ortiz, and Daz. Here, Claudio got up to a 60. So did Trevor Rhodes. Uh, Cassie Riley defeat Tony Jones. Chan Trout did Akabono in a 62. Interesting. Uh, Lazarus defeat Jim Rave, and she's Cross defeat Kai Graves. And Kai Graves is at a 59. So again, get in, get, getting there, getting there. Then we had American Wrestling Queens had their show last week. Madison Eagles drew with Tracy Taylor. They're both relative newcomers. We had ODB doing Alice in Danger at 54. Alice in Danger at 63. ODB got a 37. 100%, 100% girls of Becky and Mischief to use Sydney Rogers and Smalley to retain the tag titles. We had Mitch McCool, Ariel, and Kim Nielsen defeated Madison and Claire. Mel Kawasaki and Tracy Pitt by Q in a 60. And Annie Social drew with Nikki Rocks in a 63. So then, if we go to HWA, their weekly show, John Cena and Barry Bradbury defeat Tom, Tuss, Thomas L.A. and Billy Bax, and yeah. Then we had Ricky Shane Page and Ricky Romero and Jorge Sarr defeat Alex Shelley and Club Deluxe. Um, interesting, like, yeah. Divinity of Ray Steele and Joel Grinch defeat Corey Castle and Jimmy Jake, uh, not Jimmy Jacobs, yeah, Jimmy Jacobs, sorry. That maybe wasn't. Mass Tracker defeated Dax Albert to change the HWA title. Chris Haas defeated Dax Mofat 2 in an I quit match. And Chuck Killer defeated Air Paris. Uh, is Air Paris, was it Air Paris is just tired or is he on a dev deal? He is, okay, Air Paris actually got signed and was sent to the dev territory. That's hilarious. Okay. Then OVW, where are you? There you guys, okay. So weekly loop, um, Sarah Stock defeat AJ Sparks, Mafia defeat Isaiah, Chantel Hiller defeat Lizzie Borden, Jane Davis title, Joey Masters defeat Mr. Page, Homicide and Spanky defeat Rico and Rob Conway, and just defeat Joey Ryan. Then here, okay, so yeah, this is actually something big. Ryu Constantino defeated Justice for the HW Heavyweight title, ending, I mean, this had to be a really, so he has held the title, yeah, he held the title for basically almost a year. So interesting. 60 defenses. Insane. Then, um, let's see, was there anything else going on in the world that I forgot about? Let's see here. Is she here? Hold on. Okay. 
Okay, she's not pretty. Okay, interesting. Oh, wait, this is, hold on, I, I'm t totally lost. Sorry, my bad. Um, let's see, looking at some events. Oh, one thing that happened is ASW UK went out of business. Nothing, they were a small first promotion, but you know, interesting still. Okay, results. Was there anything else after? I thought maybe there was a big show I wanted to show you guys, but maybe not. Maybe I'm just hallucinating. Yep, okay, I was just seeing things. Okay, I mean, ah, it's sort of disappointing because like, this is a shorter... It, it's amazing what happens when I don't have the uh, bullshit of long promos with Mrs. Morningstar Raven to really pad the show or like, yeah, this was a really oddly wrestling focused week as far as the, the booking of the shows go between, I mean, I guess Eddie and King was like basically almost like, you know, when it, like it was basically 1.5 blanks of my usual main events and same thing with like Lyndon and Kidman. So yeah, I, I guess that makes sense, but still, it still feels weird that like I'm not doing this long a video, but hey, um, if you enjoyed this, go ahead and give a like, comment below on what you're liking and not liking, and of course, subscribe to your channel for TV 2020 content like this in my New Japan series, at least for now. Uh, there might be more stuff coming up, there might not, it just depends on what I have time for. But hey, um, that's it for now, talk to you later, and adios, have a good one.